Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City, guess what? It's me, I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is Lori Thompson. Hello. This is the second time we've had to do this today because I had my microphone all the way over there. Uh, well, and, and think of that as it, driver. It, was, it would have been a lousy opening. But Lori Thompson, of course, as you know, was my, uh, my aide-de-camp in the radio show in San Francisco. And, uh, it, you know, it was one of those kind of things that wherever I would go, people would go, where's Lori? Oh, like, well, that's They thought nice. we traveled together everywhere, you know? Yeah, we did. In fact, I've been having dreams, and the dreams I have with your involved were nearly always traveling. We're doing the radio show, but we're always traveling, and we're always getting into like little kerfuffles with people where we got to do some fast talking to get yeah, our way out. Yeah. But the reason why we're always traveling in your dreams is, is that in real life, I don't think we ever really says, you know saw much of each other outside really. of the we show. Not really. We go to lunch. Yeah, go to lunch. Occasionally there'd be a lunch or something, uh, you know. But I mean, <laughs> basically, you spend four hours with somebody. Uh, usually a little more than that because of some prep, yeah, uh, some prep and uh, <laughs> some after show stuff. But you spend maybe four or five hours a day with somebody. Why in the world would you hang out with them after that? Exactly. I mean, it was always pleasant when we did, but uh, our schedules were different too because we both were big uh, proponents of naps, I remember. Yeah. And. And then I would, I would go home, have my nap, and then I would go walking around because I was the proverbial kid in a candy store in San Francisco. Yeah. Come from this tiny town, you know, in the Midwest, and then just have this wonderful cosmopolitan city. I would walk all over the town every day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. But I, uh, you know, I would, I would then go home, get my nap. And then a parade of chicks would arrive at your door. Yeah, yeah. Well, well some, sometime I, I would meet somebody at the show that I took back. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a rare occasion, but I did. And then I missed, my, but then I missed my nap. I know, and that, that could throw you off. And, and by the way, you see, what happens is when you go on in the morning, you got to be there at 5 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Something ridiculous, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You've got to really um, uh, be uh, awake at, at 5 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning or 6.07, yeah. as I like to put it. <laughs> um, I can always tell, but depending on the intro you're using, you had Professor Longhair was one, and then you had a jazz one, I think by Lee Ratnauer or something, and then you had, you just had various opens, and I could tell by how long the intro played. Well, after, after the news, we could go to a song. That's true. And so I would call on my car phone, and I would say, I'm almost there, yes. play a song. In a God of I mean, the people ask me, how early did you get there to prepare for the show? And I go, what? <laughs> Did that show ever what, sound what, prepared? I'll speak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and, and I like to get, yeah, I mean, I like to wake up, but I do wake up really quickly. I mean, zero to 60 and 60 Really? You were that good? I'm, I'm, I, people always used to say to me at the station, the, the, the honchos at the station, mm -hmm. your first hour sucks. <laughs> and I said, one what reason is I'm not awake. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's something I've always awakened real fast because my mom was kind of a, she cracked the whip if she came home and we weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, act busy because she would she would give us something to do. Oh, really? And oh, yeah, that's why. And we had um, several ways to learn she was coming. We could hear her on the front porch yeah. and then we could hear her in this little foyer we had. Then we could hear her in the hall. 
And then we knew that she was coming into where we were in the in the you know the uh, family room or kitchen, and we better have something to do. Well, you know something. I I've met your parents on a couple of occasions. You did, and, yeah. And I, they were wonderful people. You well, know, that's nice. Yeah, they. Yeah. they they were wonderful people, but they were my parents. No, you know, I, I, that's what I always said. People said, oh, your mother. What did you think of my mother, for instance? I loved her. See, you course. loved her, right? She was charming. She was just a doll. The yep. woman was the biggest pain in the ass in my life. <laughs> well, you, and you know, I and people would go, people would say exactly what you said, and I'd have to say, yeah, but she isn't your mother. Yeah. And when what well, the thing is, when we're growing up, it's hard to not see them as parents. If we would learn earlier on that they were going through their same struggles. I mean, they're, you know, at 40 mm -hmm. and, you know, we we just saw them as our parents. And it's like, whoa, you're falling down on the job. And yet, if we've seen them just as people going through their own hills and valleys and life decisions, it would have been a much more easy flow. Uh, my mother. My mother um, was, was, I'll tell you what the relationship was of her to me. Yeah. And you're an only child. Yeah. I'm an only child. So I, to begin with, I was smothered. Yeah. Just Full absolutely force. smothered. Yeah. <laughs> and who wants to be smothered? Nobody wants to did be you, smothered. Well, but, did you get everything you wanted, though? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when it was when it was Christmas time or it was my birthday, I, I got all the toys, all right? Yes. And yes. when they wore out, they gave them away to charity because there was no, no brother or sister to get them. Or there were no clothes for me to hand down because when I grew right. out of them, they threw them out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, and Marjorie always goes to me, you are an only child. And I went, yeah, and your point is... Yeah. Are what, you it, jealous what, that I was an only child? Because I was the oldest child, and I really am fascinated by the birth order and how it plays into people's lives and courses of life. Well, were you were where in the birth uh, in the? Cycle? I was the oldest. You were the oldest. And, oh. And you're the one they they experiment with. So yeah, you're the biggest. Parents, you're the big experiment. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And my parents, when I look back at some of the privileges they gave me, I'm amazed. But I was a good kid. I didn't really, uh, I didn't really abuse those privileges. I mean, I didn't. I skipped school and I occasionally, but but I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't, you know, have sex randomly. I didn't have sex at all till I was 21. I, w I was I, 19. Yeah, we're late bloomers. Yeah. And I, I wanted to. Did you catch respect. up? By the way, did you catch up? <laughs> You know, um, it depends. It's all relative. Did you catch <laughs> up? I'm asking you because I certainly did. You did, yeah. But um, I don't think I really did. I mean, I yeah. might have had liaisons, but I didn't have relationships. Back to the birth order. So okay. now you're, you're, you're the oldest, so you kind of help raise the other ones. You do, exactly. And it really came into full flower. And when my mom got into real estate, I was in ninth grade. I had a little sister who was two little sisters, but one was four years younger than me. So we were in slightly different places. Mm -hmm. I knew a little more. I was a little more worldly. I was a teenager. But I didn't know the answers to some of these questions she would ask me that she would normally ask mom and dad. But my dad traveled with his job. He was a railroad engineer. And some dot, they would do long turnarounds to St. Louis or wherever. Mm -hmm. But my, and then my mom just worked constantly. And so... Amy, my sister, would come to me with these questions like, you know, what are blowjobs? <laughs> are blowjobs? I mean, and I didn't know because I'd never experienced it myself. Now, I had gathered some, some intel. My, my answer to that would be, well, you don't exactly blow on them. Right. <laughs> How it got that. And, and, and quite frankly, a job is something that's a task. This isn't a task. Yeah, not you know, for you. So both those <laughs> terms really shouldn't be used. And, and together. And, and what yeah. is basically sucking a dick. Okay, let's put it that right. way. Call it what it is, in other words. Yeah. But uh, you would ask me these questions, and I, I would know, I would give her my best answer. But it was the answer of a 14-year-old who... And now, how many years ahead, how many years behind was she? 
from you. She's four years younger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, not uh, a lot so, to not a lot in these days, like at your age, but but back then. It was that, a dick. You know, if you're cat- if you're if you're fourteen and she's ten, there's an entirely different frame of reference. Exactly. Yeah. And I and she was a very smart, sharp, intuitive ten year old. She was she's always been her whole life. But still, you're fourteen, you know, people that you know are having sex. Your friends are having sex, some of them. And at ten, I don't think they were. So I was. I would try to boil that, give her the Reader's Digest of my experience with a moral spin, of course, and because uh, I wanted her to to be okay. But it was a responsibility that weighed rather heavily on me. And, now, and, did she have her first sexual encounter younger than you? No, it, she was in. Well, maybe. Yeah, no, she did. She was younger than I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when she did it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, she, I think it was. I think it came in high school or college. Oh, yeah. really? In high school? Yeah, uh, but she was still an uh, an earlier bloomer than I. But I was just I kind of blew the stats away. I was really a late bloomer. Well, you know, and, I was I was a late bloomer because first of all, you had to find somebody to have sex with, yeah. <laughs> and that was the biggest <laughs> problem. You know, and most of them were in witness relocation at the time. And when it finally <laughs> happened for me, it was in the back seat of my 1939 Pontiac torpedo. Whoa, torpedo! Yeah, probably uh, electric. Uh, parked uh, in the woods right off of what is now the Marin County Civic Center. Ooh! And yeah. uh, I, I did it, but I didn't know whether I actually found it. So I had yeah. her come back and meet me at my home in San Anselmo uh, the next Monday. Uh, my parents, my there. parents were both at work, and so we consummated it there. And that's where, there. you know, I said, "Okay, this is maybe more like it should be." Instead of thinking, and I think I hit a crease, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was good that you, you know, gave it a second try to make sure. That's but correct. I would. See, I'd gone with the same guy, and we we were raised in the Pentecostal church. We couldn't even go to movies and dances for a long time. Were your parents so, that strict about it? Because they didn't seem like parents that were strict. My mother was strict, but my dad, thank goodness for him, he was a voracious reader of like everything from the classics, from you know the the Greek philosophers to uh, Twain. He loved Twain. He mm-hmm. loved. Chesterton. He loved uh, Thoreau. And so he balanced out her zealotry. I think she was a zealot. Yeah. And, uh, but she lived, she walked the walk and talked now, the talk. Did yeah. you go to Pentecostal church? I went to a Baptist church. You, went, you didn't go to a Pentecostal. But I went to Pente- Pentecostal church. I went to a Baptist school, rather, for one mm. semester. Okay, but, and, but Pentecostal church, what goes yeah. on there? I mean, they speak tongues and everything, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> They do, but every Pentecostal congregation has its own personality. Some, that's a big emphasis. And, you know, I hate to say this, but looking at it as I did, it seemed to be in the poorer churches that theat- the theatrics were more pronounced. Mm-hmm. In the more, uh, more educated congregations, that's not as prevalent. But you have speaking in tongues, which means that you are blessed by the Holy Spirit and speak in something that would resemble gibberish. There was actually a term for it, but I can't remember what it was, Galaglia or something like that. There was, Yeah. I, I, I don't know what the term is, but I, I do remember there was a term associated with speaking in tongues. That was yeah, the language well, you were speaking. Yeah, and it's, the, it's based on Jesus descending in, in the form of a dove uh, at the, on the day of Pentecost, and there were a lot of people who were believers, so they were spiritually all of one a mind, but they couldn't talk to each other. And so the Spirit descended like a dove, and they were all able to speak in a heavenly language. And I think symbolically, but it seems literal, it's a way of committing yourself because you are the person. Did that's they do anointed. any of this healing crap? Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. I've never seen much in person, but I've seen long haul long haul healing, which is where you know someone is prayed for over months and their recovery seems to uh 
seems to exceed the normal expectations. Uh -huh. And then my cousin was diagnosed with leukemia, and his teenage parents mm -hmm. drove all night to an Oral Roberts meeting. And by the time they left that meeting, uh, his fingernails were starting to harden, and he was showing immediate signs of recovery. So, and that's something he, he recovered from being healed. Oh yeah, oh he's he's now a chiropractor, quite hale and hearty. So the Lafayette. question was, did he really have leukemia? Well, they, he was diagnosed. Well, but diagnosed is one thing. Did he really have leukemia? See. But, you know, with that begs the question. And uh, uh, for a lot of people, there, it's not for skeptics, or at least it can be for skeptics who are ordinarily skeptic about most things, but for some reason they'll feel the mm -hmm. touch of the Holy Spirit and it will break through that skepticism in a way that is so personal and unique yeah. that it changes but their life. Now, was this childhood leukemia? That's what I mean. It was childhood, childhood leukemia. Childhood leukemia sometimes corrects it, itself later on. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does. Well, yeah. I see. I mean, the thing about healing that always bothered me was, of course, the fact that some people who were really sick didn't seek the proper guidance they should have sought out, and which were good we doctors. Were never, in my era of Pentecost, doctors were encouraged. Yeah. I mean, you could pray for healing, but go to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> and... So, but Boy. I, and the thing is, faith is just a unique animal. I mean, it's just a very unique animal because uh, I think it was probably more the faith of those two teenage parents who thought their child was going to die at, within yeah. six months. He yeah. was given six months. And uh, they drove all night. And I think it was much more their faith that was the, that was the lesson of that. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes these, these healing things, they, they felt they got healed by the church and they didn't get healed and then they die because they didn't go to yeah. doctors, you know. Well, and the, the, the healings uh, or... I would hate to be a doctor who had told somebody, your kid has leukemia, and then they took him to one of these faith healers. Oral healings. And, and then they didn't go back to the doctor because their kid was healed. That would be bad news. Yeah. yeah, and and like uh, Sam Kinison, he was Sam. He, since then, I think that there were a sincere, genuine. He was a kid preacher, right? And, and he was inspired by Oral Roberts, and on a more grassroots level, by these fire and brimstone uh, preachers. Oh, I, I had I had uh, Sam once. I said, "Give me a little sermon here," you know. And he went into it, and it was it was exactly what you hear on television from these guys screaming and yelling and, you know, screaming to the Lord. The thing is, what's interesting, are there, uh, maybe you can tell me more in Florida than I can here in New York, but to my knowledge, there aren't, outside of uh, Joel Osteen, who's another phony, yeah. you know. He's okay, for the, my Well, voice. yeah, but he's a phony. <laughs> um, they're all phonies. They're all grabbing money from people based on a myth. Okay. Well, see, ego. Yes, ego yeah. enters into it, and then these these people become these icons of spiritual. Yeah, but spiritual. outside of him, there aren't very many of those those preachers on TV anymore. At least it's here. now taken. It's the form. It's new age spiritualism, which like Marianne Williamson, and. Uh, that that is it, yeah. replaced, you know the the uh, it's softer edged. You know, I, I when I was looking into the Iowa caucuses this year, they said a, a major component in Iowa were the evangelicals. Uh, I, that is true. And, I and my question is, who exactly are the evangelicals? I mean. Do you get a do you get a membership card? I mean, how do you know you're an evangelical? Letter sweater with an E, still have mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, this is why I love her, you know. <laughs> but you're right, man. Evangelicals. I think that became a softer word because it was kind of embarrassing in college to say I was raised Pentecostal mm. or I was raised Assembly of God. Oh, so evangelical is <laughs> a better term. Yeah. Well, and you know who 
I love. Jim and Tammy, I'll always love. Oh, oh God, I love them. Oh, do yeah, I, Jim, did I love them. And because, you know, they made it they made it okay for Pentecostals to have some bucks. Because they did, there was a show. I thought up, those two there. people were so screwed. I loved them, I, But yeah. they were so screwed. You know, they said, we're building a, uh, um, a theme park, a, a religious theme park. Six Flags Send me Jesus. your money. And normally, yeah. if any of these guys said that, what they got were a couple of Ferris wheels, and that was it, you know? Yeah. They built an actual theme park. I mean... Yeah, and if, if they had taken care to connect with the SEC on what was required, but they were selling unsecured timeshares... They were doing that, and that, that yeah, was their yeah. And and the other problem was they weren't they weren't checking out their people. Money would come in literally in bills, and there would be a counting room like you have in Las Vegas, yeah, where they were counting all the money. But people were then stuffing their pockets with the money, and, yeah. And Jim and Tammy, meanwhile, didn't want any part of that. They had other important things to do with their ministry, and yeah. I felt that they got the here's the really bad deal they got. Do I have enough time to explain this? Jerry Falwell always yes. had to go to Jim and Tammy because what they did in the early days is they got themselves a transponder on a satellite. Mm -hmm. And Sorry. they were able to send their shows out by satellite. So if, 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 like Falwell wanted to do it, they had to come to Jim Baker and buy time on his transponder. Yeah, and it galled and, him. And they, they galled him. They wanted the transponder. He and Jimmy Swaggart and a couple of others all got together and figured out, how do we get this guy? How do we get his transponders? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. what they do is they created this whole situation that got them in trouble. And mm -hmm. what happened was Falwell went to Baker and said, I know you're in real trouble now. Sign over the transponders to me. Mm -hmm. and I will take care of them until you get all this taken care of, and then I'll give it back to you. Yeah. He no, never gave it back. This was his way of literally stealing it. Yeah, it was. It was a gentleman's agreement. I wouldn't get into any kind of gentleman's agreement with Jerry Falwell. Yeah. He's the last thing. But that's what really screwed them. These guys were, were jealous and wanted those transponders because... They had a full network going. They had a great, they had the, the regular show they did, and then they had the Tammy, Tammy's Breakfast or something, yeah. you know, the show. <laughs> and then they had uh, some puppet shows. And, uh, of course, they were puppeteers early on for, for I think, Jerry Falwell. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, with, Robert, yeah. Yeah, with uh, Susie Moppet, I think was yeah. the name of the doll, <laughs> which you gave me a Susie Moppet doll. And if you pull you. the string in her neck, she says, Jesus loves you. He really, really does. And it's Tammy <laughs> Faye's voice. I haven't, I still have it in uh, storage somewhere. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, you know, and they were, she was, she was, I think Jim and Tammy, they, they split philosophies and she became committed to their cause, which I she did love people, man. She just really... Well, I mean, tell. they were entertainers, is what I'm saying. This was yeah. their big thing when they were with Falwell. They did a puppet show. They were entertainers. And first and foremost, I loved watching that show. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you were stoned. Well, the best part was this kid they had that had no arms and no legs. Oh, no. Not Kevin. Not Kevin. Kevin, Kevin. He, and the, in the... In the uh, um, Amusement park. They created Kevin's house. Everything was no. And to everybody stay. could go see. Yeah, everybody could go see Kevin and his friends, like the one-armed girl, the you know, the kid with two heads or whatever. And it was like, come see our biblical freak show. Exactly. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, because well, yeah, the elements of fascination uh, to human beings don't change a whole lot. I mean, you can change the setting, which was, you know, a Pentecost, uh, Jesus setting. And, but those elements of entertainment are going to be good in the Jesus, in the Jesus setting, going to be good in Vegas. Yeah. Elements. Yeah. But I mean, they were real entertainers and I love them. You, you know that, you know, I used oh, to yeah. go home and watch them every day. I had a friend, a girlfriend who had a satellite dish and we just sit there as they would send down all the programs for the week. 
to oh, the stations okay. and watch them end on end, you know, over the wow. weekend. Yeah, I remember you. I was thinking about all your girlfriends, your mayor harem, uh, over the well, years. Yeah, and you had some really cool uh, girlfriends. Ones you know that I it would be fun to keep in touch with. Like you, had, do you remember at the Atlanta Olympics, a uh, old girlfriend of yours who was with somebody else? We went to dinner with her and her no bowl at a restaurant in Buckhead. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. She was, and and she was a gem. I liked it. She that, was her name back. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time for this little segment of Lori and Alex, which is better than <laughs> Jim and Tammy, i got to tell you. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, i see you next week. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, that there, wait a minute, that there uh, uh, is Lori Thompson. <laughs> Bye, Lori. Bye-bye. Now in its 10th year, this is Gavin. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, that's another rerun of Lori. Let me tell you what happened here. It really depresses me. These kind of things happen. These kind of things happen. Today, Lori and I did two half-hour or 25-minute episodes. Now, over the day before, I had rebooted this machine because I had put in the new operating system, Okay. I forget that when that happens, this new board that I have has to be rebooted. Otherwise, it doesn't show up. And so we did this show today, and it was great. We did two great segments. I mean, we're talking about our, our sex lives as we were growing up. I mean, it was, it was really good. It was really good. And uh, let me turn this on. There we go. Uh, it was really good. And uh, it just, um, I lost it. I, I, I mean, I have it, you know. I could play it for you right now, but there's no audio. So I now I have to write Lori. I wrote Lori, and I said, oh, God, guess what happened? I'm sorry. So can you do another two with me next week? But I feel bad about it because, number one, they were really good, and I hate wasting somebody's time, you know. So anyway, that was that. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, we only have one person waiting, uh, and I don't know why. I guess we, you know, I mean, I, I, I've been talking with my old producer uh, Albert Reynoso, and he has talked to me about, you know, you really shouldn't do this three days a week. And I said, well, but I do these interviews with people that I enjoy having on, like. Lori and Bubbles and, you know, so on. And yourself, as it were. And I said, I really would, uh, you know, I, I like uh, having those people on. So he says, well, why don't you one day run just a show with nothing but those interviews, and then on Friday do, uh, do a, a ramble, and that's it. And when I look today that the only person here right now is a good one, Charlie Wallace, but that's the only person calling me, I say to myself, you know, that might not be a bad idea, you know? And uh, at, at my age, why should I work so heavy? So anyway, I'm, I, that was, it was a good suggestion on his part. I, I don't know why I'm not, you know, just uh, thinking that it's not the worst idea in the world. But anyway, let me, let me go in here and uh, we'll talk to Charlie, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, let's see here. Here's here's Charlie, and uh, Alan has just uh, 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 come online here. So we have two other people. But if we if this doesn't improve by the end of the half hour, uh, we'll do some. We'll go somewhere else. We'll do something else. We'll sign off. Is what we'll do. And you know, I missed the first part. Why are you signing off at a half hour? Well, look. Because there's only three of us? Yeah. Oh, that's reasonable. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know? Uh, if there are more in about a half hour, I'll, you know. Yeah. But I, you know, I had a rough day today. I, I went out, I had to do my physical therapy to begin with, with this whole thing screwing up with Lori because I didn't have any audio. 
Um, and I could explain to you why, but this board I bought, if I, if I turn the machine off and then I reboot it, this thing doesn't automatically show up on all those, on all those things, right? I have to reboot the board in order to get it all to come on. I forgot to do that. I didn't remember that you have to do that. And I'll probably forget it next time, too. <laughs> you know, so it'll happen again. But I had to write Lori and tell her, oh, God, this is what happened. Can, you, can we do another two next week and to get this thing taken care of, you know? But anyway, here comes Bree. At least we have somebody from... Uh, Malaysia. I think yeah. we have Bree. I hope it's Bree. There he is. There. Hi, Bree. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hi, Alex. Yeah, nice to see you. I um, heard that you only had uh, Charlie. Is that still true? No, now I have um, Charlie and uh, Alan. Oh, Alan. Okay. So we don't need you at all. all right. So get lost. <laughs> okay. All right, good. I just wanted to make sure. Wow. So anyway, <laughs> so how, how's everything out there? And wh what is that building in back of you? Is that an apartment building or is that a, what is it? Oh, it's not even that a building. Is, it looked like a building. <laughs> it really, it I'm looks waiting like, for it, doesn't it look like it's a building with the, like two towers up there and everything like that, you know? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for, we have this new shuttle bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the old one was terrible, but it had an app which told you when it was, you know, where it was, when it was. Now this one, you never know when it's coming. So I just come down here. I spray citronella spray to keep the mosquitoes away. And I wait and I hope that it will come by. Mm -hmm. And then I will wave it because yeah. it's free. Uh, otherwise, I got to pay a dollar or two uh, to get up to the office. So I'm. I'm I'm in no rush today. I don't have anything due. I already did my meetings online, so I'll just wait. Yeah, and does the does that spray help you? Oh yeah, yeah. It keeps keeps them away. They don't like it. One actually came and went on my shoe, and so I sprayed, and it flopped around and looked like it was disgusted and flew away. <laughs> it is a citrus spray, so rather than kill the bug, it, citronella. It just yeah. makes the bug say, "Hey, I don't want to be around here." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any compunction about killing mosquitoes, but uh, this is just what I have. It's yeah. anything that's going to kill them might also kill me, I guess. So where well, are you where are you going now to lunch? Huh? Where are you going to lunch? Uh, eventually, yeah. I, I will go to the office first, and I'll just let people see that I'm around, and then I will go to lunch. You say you're going to the office. Now, you uh, you used to be, uh, you used to teach, didn't you, at one point? Yeah. What are you doing yeah, now? Yeah, I used to do that. What are you doing now? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a debatable question. <laughs> no, I still I still do some teaching. I still do some teaching, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but uh, not as much of it. Um, I, I try to come up with other ideas for things, which uh, seems to be going okay. They like the ideas I've come up with, but, you know, it's the Janet Jackson song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? You know, you always got to have something new, some new idea. Yeah. So, but you've been there a long time. You know, the other places you've been. Yeah, haven't well, been... this is five years. Yeah, I was six years in Dubai. I was seven years in Singapore. So I've got one more year here and then maybe another year. And, and then I'll be at my, my regular limit. And then will you come back here? I like to stand in one place, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, uh, of all the places I've been... Um, this is the one where I could see myself longer. Um, I thought I could see myself longer in mm -hmm. um, but that I'd be longer in Dubai. I think Sears in Dubai was correct, but 
I've had offers both places uh, to to return. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't. I, one never knows, you know. Just Are you ever going go to return the to the United States to see work? what becomes available? And Are you ever going to return to the United States? Uh, to somebody work? is running down. Oh, I would. I would like to. I would like to. She's running down. Uh, I don't know if you can see. She so. I don't know if she knows something I don't know. Let's see. There she's running. No. Okay. So she's waiting for her ride. I thought she saw. Sometimes people will, will see the bus from up on their balcony and they'll run down. That happened yesterday. Okay. But hold on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I mean, one never knows. I, I, I did apply for a job or I am in the current process of applying for jobs in uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. And New Jersey. So you don't want to come Texas. to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll go wherever you know the job description sort of fits, and the salary is decent, and they'll have me. You know, that's that's, that's the. Uh, I'm not too. I'm not. Well, I am kind of picky, actually. <laughs> but yeah. No, well, you know, if you go to if you go to uh, if you go to Texas, so you can probably go out to lunch with Charlie or something. <laughs> I kind of yeah. Like what part of that. Texas is Charlie in? Austin. Oh, in Austin. Okay, my niece lives there. Yeah. She works for a startup, uh, one of these online app companies or something. A lot of it has to do, last time I checked, it had something to do with sharing of recipes and food culture, something like that. So anyway, so Alan, to ask you're, next you're, time quiet, I see you're quiet tonight, Alan. Oh, well, I'm just listening to Bree, and Charlie has said three words, so, you know, that's... Uh... <laughs> uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm confused what Bree teaches. What does Bree teach? I don't really talk about all of that. I'm sorry. I, okay, I just, no, that, no, re that, that, yeah. no reason to be sorry. Okay. I understand. Some Sometimes, you know, toilet bowl cleaning is a tough subject, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I teach janitorial services. Right, right. <laughs> I get it. So, okay. No, no problem. Well, let's see here. What else, what, what's happening? Let's see. Nothing. Nothing. Well, we're going to war. I don't know if that's not. Well, oh, you know what's happened here in New York? We I just it just came out uh, what, a couple hours, about an hour ago. Trump got shot at again. No. Mm, guess who's being arre arrested by the feds? Who? Our mayor. What? Yeah. Our oh. mayor is being arrested by the feds. Really. What did he do? This goes to teach you. You can't be a mayor in New York without being harassed. <laughs> why, why are they? Why are they arresting? Well, people? it was a whole thing about the way he raised money for his campaign by taking money from foreign countries and things like ah. that. Ah, okay. yeah, oh, yeah. This is, you know, I mean, it's it's funny. We've we've had some very good mayors. Okay, I mean, the only one who definitely wasn't a crook was Bloomberg because he didn't have to be. Yeah, he was oh. already multi. He was already a multi yeah. billionaire, and probably he was a crook to get, to get there, you know. But he was the that most was, honest uh, mayor I think we've ever had. But this town is not. That was heading. one of what? That was that's one of the reasons why. Oh, I got a mosquito here. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Singapore pays their politicians very highly. The the idea is that if you pay them enough, they won't see you know, extra ways to make money. That's a good idea. Yeah. This is a smart idea. Yeah, actually. so they so they they can like make a million dollars uh just to be a politician. I, I don't know the exact rate, but you, I, I recall reading somewhere like you can become a millionaire being a politician in uh, in <laughs> Singapore. That was one of the things that I kind of whenever I saw I saw Hillary Clinton go, doing the rounds, making the rounds with her new book the other day. And I've met her uh at least twice, I lunch with her. I lunch with Bill. Uh, as wow. with Bill, it was a larger group, but with Hillary, it was smaller. She was running for Senate in New York at the time. But I, I, I don't know how I feel about people becoming well in public service. I, I have to be well off. 
them to be well paid. Just don't like it when I see them. Like when Obama left office, he immediately went to Richard Branson's private island, you know, for for vacation. And I don't know. I I just uh, well, there's something think, that doesn't wait a minute, I sit think, right with me. I think he's entitled to do that. I think that you know he's no longer president. He can't yeah. do anything good for Branson. Uh, they might be. Oh, make, I think he could. Well, I mean, he couldn't do anything. I don't. I don't think. Okay, in the case of Obama, you didn't have a president who was completely. What could we call it? Washington up. He was almost an outsider, that yep. came in briefly as a senator and then ran for president and won. You know. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I I don't I, I always kind of trusted him. And I don't think there was anything wrong with him going to Branson's Island, okay? Well, the thing, the, the thing that caught me about Branson, I think I told you before, um, that, that mosquito does not want to, he doesn't care, he's coming after me. Yeah, um, you go after that. The thing about him, there was a, uh, there was a uh, hurricane or something that hit this island. Yeah. And... I remember seeing a video. Richard Branson was like, "Please donate," you know. And he was down there, and he's showing the shacks that were. All... And then I found out he owns the island, and like those people were probably worked for him. Like he was the economy of that island. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I donating for your people? Like that. That totally lost me because I was. I think it's a called. Big Richard I think Branson it's fan. called. I think it's called Necker Island, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, and and um, uh, but why did you feel bad about him? You know, it was his responsibility. He he could write a check and solve all the problems immediately. He was and and basically he was asking other people to fund his island, to fund his way of life, to fund his, you know, the people that live there. I don't remember there. him exactly. I, I disagree with that. I don't that. remember him exactly. And he lost me. I don't remember him exactly doing that. He did. I remember the video because I thought about I was thinking about donating. And then I read that he owns that, that those people work for him. Yeah, he owns and, a whole you know, island. Those yeah. families are, are primary. Yeah. So that's his responsibility in my my opinion. Um, you know, but I followed him. I've read his books. I know I, I can tell you a lot about him from all of that. And I, I, I really looked up to him until that time when he asked other people to donate to something that should have been his they were only there because of him, you know, essentially. And why doesn't he build them, uh, uh, you know, concrete with well, rhubarb? I, I, you know, I, I don't know, know the complete story. We know how to build. Yeah, I don't know the complete story, so I can't, I can't argue it with you. Uh, but I would imagine part of it maybe had to do with, you know, these guys who say they're billionaires aren't as rich as they say they are. Okay? And so they have a crisis like that hit, and they're not able to overcome it. You know, I mean, how much of a billionaire is Donald Trump? Do you think he could even come up with a billion dollars right now? I mean, outside of the money yeah. he's stolen from his minions who, you know, send him money for his, uh, the, what's the latest one, a coin now? He has a coin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he has the... Uh, the 10 bucks, he signed up for 100 silver. <laughs> yeah, they had the bitcoins. Uh, That's worth 30. Huh? Oh, 30. I'm sorry, 30. <laughs> it's like, oh well, it's a God. silver coin, and the silver in it is worth $32. Yeah. And you can buy it for $100. You can buy it for 100 <laughs> What an investment. Well, if you, don't you want a, a, a coin with Donald Trump's visage on it? No. I, I hope Phil is not contributing to this. I wish he would call in. I. He cannot be giving him money. I, oh, you know, I'll, tell, I'm I'll tell you. I'll tell you. When you want to talk about guys who have a lot of money, is or supposedly have a lot of money, begging for money from people, it's Trump. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I was going to tell you this, Alex. So my brother, because I heard you before, my brother's boss, the mayor's in, the feds got him, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you what what they have to pass in government. He did not show his taxes, Eric Adams. Neither did Trump. When they don't show their taxes, that's a warning sign. Well, that, you know, you know what's very funny. 
Uh, you ask about that, and I say, well, you know, you, you, what your taxes are is private to you, but it really isn't. If I want to rent an apartment here in New York City, you I could have to show them to your two taxes. years worth of yep. tax yep. statements. Yep. So they know every penny I spend and don't spend yep. and so on. And quite frankly, I think there should be a law against that. You know, Same way in California. If you want to rent someplace, you got to prove your income. You could even ask for the last pay stub they got. Yep. And call up, yeah. No. I mean, we didn't do... See, well, you, don't wanna, you don't want to rent to people that... that oh, I know, agree with you. They could have enough money to get in and then tear up the place or don't have enough yeah. money to get it the next month. So you want to make sure in the background investigation that the rental, that, no. that people can afford it. Yeah, see, but I think Alex's point is what you're trying to say, Alex, is if me and you have to show all this, yeah, they're I mean, running for and, higher and, office. And these people, they don't have to show it? Yeah, I mean, uh, Donald Trump running for president, I want to see his... Uh, I want to see everything. Yeah, like, hey, yeah. who, who do you owe money to? Where is it coming from? I mean, this doesn't add up. Well, how did you get all I don't really need to see it, but the media can see it and then tell me. No, I don't they, want they, they can make a public record. Well, I think if somebody's running for president of the United States, he owes it to the American public, to be honest. I want to vote for you. I want to see where it's coming from. Well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily to see where every penny is coming from, but I do think it should be made public because if there's anything in there where, oh, well, let's say you can be, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can be uh, um, a crook like Donald Trump. Huh? Well, could be an agent of a foreign country. Be an agent I was just going to say, how do you know he doesn't know? Hey, what is this coming from Russia? Well, he, he, you know, that yeah, he, you can see he can be bought and sold. I mean, well, he, yeah, that he can be. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Boy, I'm so out of it now. What is it again? Like blackmailed? Uh, huh? Blackmailed. 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 You know, uh, it, let's make sure he doesn't have anything where he can be blackmailed, and you can tell that from some. Yeah, of the but taxes. I don't think you could blackmail Trump. Right, it, it, I think that's impossible. It, in what you know, was surprised really. for him to get one hundred thirty thousand to her? Well, you know, he never wanted his he never wanted his taxes to be seen for a very simple reason. He made a his entire uh, uh, business was based on him being a billionaire. This yep. myth of him being a billionaire. Mm -hmm. And if he came out with his taxes, you would find out exactly how much of a billionaire he really was. And uh, that Not was... necessarily. Huh? What do you mean not, not necessarily? Not necessarily. Your taxes, your taxes show your annual income. Personal income. Uh, but it, right, but it doesn't show your wealth. You can you could you could you, know, you can read that and see where it's what he's generating and you can see like hey listen it you could see a lot of things with taxes because I remember talking to Shecky about that Alex he said the same thing you were saying that there's a reason when they don't want to disclose it Bree that's a blueprint to what what they're doing really yeah yeah I would agree with you I mean it's a warning it's it's a warning sign. I mean, look how, I mean, that's, I mean, it's almost like if you're going to the bank, Alex, right? Mm -hmm. And, or even Bree, I want a loan for a house, a mortgage. They got to look through everything. I just can't say, I'm going to give this guy 300000 well, As I say, I had to, when I took an apartment downtown, and when I took this apartment here, I had to supply them with two years worth of tax <laughs> statements, to, to my tax <laughs> returns. And if I have to do that, then they should have to do it. It's not asking too much mm. of them. Let me put it that way. Trump acts like it's he can't do it. He's got too much going, and you know his taxes are. He's he might have said the account. It's so much going on. It's very difficult. It's very complicated. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not. Yeah, I, explosive. yeah, I, I can't. Ex he's I, being I, audited. Oh, he's being yeah, audited. Yeah, he's under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So know. you know, I mean, come on. So I mean I think that we are owed that, and uh, I'm I I would not expect it of them if it's not expected of me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I think this country's totally turned on its head. Really, I I still cannot get over, like Alex. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I was walking to the post office, right, mm -hmm. and I was mailing my packages. Alex, I'm walking back home, and the, this big truck. It must have been a Hummer or something. Big Trump flag going up and down the main road, like semi-speeding up and down. 
It's almost like they're trying to be intimidating, I think. Like, like, hey, I'm over here. We're here still. Oh, I've got people in this neighborhood. Uh, the amount of motorcycles that go up and down the block with their tailpipes farting, you know? Uh, Blaring. Huh? Yeah, look at that here. You'll probably Weird. hear one or two along this way. Yeah. I, uh, uh, oh, boy. There you just almost an accident right there. Yeah. Should have shown you it. Well, you see, when one car just pulled out in front of another. When Marjorie hears those uh, motorcycles making all that noise, she yells at the top of his voice, her voice, small it. penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a guy on YouTube that does that in Thailand. Oh, really? Is he yeah, is he, is he, is he has he, a YouTube channel. Is he still alive? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm going to turn Yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand that. It's it's a quality of life issue and, mm -hmm. and a noise pollution issue. So, But there are younger guys that they want to have this loud noise. And I don't know, you know, it, there must be something psychological, obviously, about it. It's like, well, when people roll down their windows and turn up their music, you know, and they want everybody else to hear their music. Well, uh, something happens. It, I don't, but... I, I mentioned this to Marjorie yesterday. I said, what's happened? Is it because we're old that all these noises bother us now? I don't think that's it. You know, I start hearing a motorcycle yeah. going up and down the street or a siren. The siren. I never liked it as a kid, Alex. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it just drives think, me crazy. I think it's, I mean, if I don't know if you agree, but when we get older, mm -hmm. um, we just, we mm -hmm. recognize what makes a quality life and you know when we're younger we're, we're just sort of hustling no, and trying I, to get by and i move think forward. my ear, i think my ears are more sensitive to it how about you mm -hmm. jeff do you feel the same way that you're bothered well, by noises I think, that, I think that i don't know maybe 10 years ago it was almost a, a license that that they had to keep things quiet mm -hmm. you didn't have yeah. the loudest kind of car and whatever and they would pull you over and give you a tractor problem yeah uh, because you're they give you a, they give you a, a noise ticket basically is yeah. what it was yeah yeah i thought yeah. that was the way it was and all of a sudden it's gone and now you do whatever you want well you know i mean people I who think do they probably have that here well, people, they probably have that here, but the enforcement is a big issue. Well, but people who do like that, people who ju do that, are just being pricks because they're being in. Uh, 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 they they don't care about the people that live around them, you know. They don't yeah. care about other no people. No empathy. Yeah, no empathy, no caring. Totally inconsiderate. Right, and yeah. and I don't know, but am I right or am I wrong or am I am I an old man saying this? But isn't one of the Touchstones of a civilized society, uh, the way we treat each other. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one hundred percent. And I've, I've had that issue here. I mean, I've had to move three times, one, two, two times since I got here. Now I'm in my third apartment because the first two, I couldn't get along with the neighbors. They just they refused to be civil. And their whole attitude was, well, they've been there longer, and they're from here. That was it. Oh, so that gives them the right, you know. But, that, you and know, so I, mean, I know. Don't they know how to be civil with other people? Don't they say, hey, you know, am I, I, I'm good, I'll be good to them, and they'll be good to me, and we'll be good to each other? Right. You know, I mean, That's we've right. lost that. We've really lost that here in the United States. I mean, the whole thing with the... The hate, just the hate that goes on in this country now, even uh, in between political parties and so on. I mean, there's nothing civil yeah. any longer about the United States of America. And what I do like well, about Ka what I do like about Kamala Harris is that she's trying to bring back a little bit of that civility. Now, maybe it's for her own yeah. good and for trying to win, but man, it's sure refreshing. You know, you listen to him. You think the he, you would think like we're like we're yeah. being baited, Trump. It's like oh, with Trump, it, with Trump, there is nothing good about this country. Yeah. We are in trouble. Uh, 
the latest thing he did, which is just pales in comparison to anything else he's done recently, <laughs> is his, did you hear the speech he gave about uh, I'm the protector of women? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Say that. Yeah. Yeah. Is he crazy? I mean, the... yes. <laughs> yeah, you know you're right. No, no, he will. Hmm? He, he uh, speaks in you know, sort of fifth grade language. Yep. Mm -hmm. And in order to, he knows what will resonate in the media. Yeah, he's, he's right. very good with sound bites. Mm -hmm. I mean, his whole persona, his whole language is built around media. Mm -hmm. He knows what to say, when to say it. And he, and he's an Escher painting to a large extent. What you see, what you want to see, when you want to see it. Yeah. And that's. He says women will be impossible. happy and free. Yeah. Free. President. Because he's free there. To do what? They can't control their own bodies. I'm just going to say that they can't decide what they want to have a baby on. They will be free. Yeah. That's what he Bizarre oh, he ones. won't have you to know. pay money for them. Is that what he's saying? Yeah, That's I mean, what he's saying. You, you, you won't have to. I have a question. You, you won't have to worry about being raped on the streets anymore. <laughs> no, you have That's to be worried weird. to be raped in a in a uh, in a no, dressing no. room at uh, where was it uh, yeah. Bloomingdale's or wherever it was that he. That's what happened. He was in Bloomingdale. My mother used to work in Macy's. Maybe it was, was it Bloomingdale's. Or Macy's was is like Kmart. Tony. Oh really? I thought Macy's. Well, she worked in A and S before that. Really? He was, he had, he uh, got in a dressing room? This guy has no I think it was a dressing room, wasn't it? Oh, oh that yeah. was a good dressing room. That's my brother. Thing. Yeah. That's, uh, he, is that the one that he, yeah. no, is that the one that E. Jean oh. Carroll got the money for? Yeah. 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 Finally, the bus comes. Yeah. The bus is there, finally. Really? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. The bus finally comes. Oh, I thank, decided to walk, and then the thank, bus comes. So now thank you, thank God. Now we won't have to watch all the uh, beautiful buildings behind Bree anymore. <laughs> that looks so clean. <laughs> well, today I, I had my normal yeah. my normal conundrum. I went to my I took a a, a, a lift over to uh, over to, over to my PT, my okay. physical therapy. And then after the physical therapy, I decided I'll take a cab home because it's cheaper than a lift. And plus, you can get, uh, well, there didn't seem to be any cabs. Oh, and what no, there that's... were didn't I'm stop. the only one on here because there's no app. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Are you the oh, only one found there? the bus. Bus mm. all to himself. Anyway, the point was is that I I then had the conundrum, which I, I run into every now and then. I can't get a cab right now, but I know that if I call Lyft and call for a Lyft, uh, a cab will suddenly show up. Yep. <laughs> so I just waited, you know. And the you great thing about... there. What? Everybody walks in New York. You could have walked there. I don't. I, I think I only took a cab once in New York when I was there in 1999. Wait a minute. Well, how, what, do you know how far I would have to walk to walk. get to my PT? No, I don't know. No, oh, it's quite a few miles. Oh, okay. Forget that idea. Yeah, yeah. not a couple of blocks. Oh. And why I am I going? To, why am I going to PT to try and be able to walk again? Yeah. yeah, so, you know. I, I love physical therapy. They show you all these exercises, then give you a handout, and you're expected to do them at home. Yep. Well, no, as and I you... said, I what bothers me about it is I would like to be able to go to PT, and that's where I do all the exercises. And then I go home, and I don't have to do anything till next week. Right. <laughs> no. And today they really worked me out, you know, so. Yeah. It might have been later. Yeah. So anyway, but I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know if, it's, if I feel any better, but. You know, in, in a couple of weeks, you'll realize that you're yeah. getting better. Oh, really? You'll sleep good tonight, too, with the PT after working out. Yeah. 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 Okay. When they used to work on my mother's her legs at the house, she slept good. She slept like a log and like after that. You yeah. touched your mother's legs? Oh, no. <laughs> this guy, this guy's going to vote for Trump me. now. She used to sleep that night like a baby. If I was watching it, I used to walk by the room and say, oh, she's sleeping good. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't know your mother, Tony. Yeah. But your stories sound like throw mama from the train. <laughs> she wasn't happy. 
<laughs> I'll tell you, you know what I do miss though, Alex? She used to wake me up in the middle of the night, Anthony. I said, what? And she used to ask for Tic Tacs or water. I said, Ma, this is not important at night. My my mouth is dry. I remember that. Yeah. This is the lady in Throw Mama from the Train, I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> she, she's a little Italian lady, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so. Uh, I love her. Billy Crystal's there, and he's eating with the... With, uh, and, and she asks, who's this? And he says, oh, it's Cousin Billy. And she hits him over the head with a fry pan. <laughs> you don't have a Cousin Billy. Okay. Uh, all right. I guess you had to see Throw Mama from the Train. I've so. seen Throw yes, Mama from the Train, but I, for, I, I, I forgot it years either. ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I just saw are, it you, are you still the only guy on the bus, Bree? Got the whole place to himself. Yeah, there's one on there. One on there. Oh, okay. Two Oh, okay. But and it's, you, it's rare. And you're going where? To work. Oh, he's going, going to work. work. He did say that. Going to work. Well, I, now I'm going to go to lunch. I but it. the place I want to go, I need my, uh, I need a car to get 50% off. And I love you're breaking oh. up on us, I yeah. guess. You know. Yeah, the bus is <laughs> and now they're Wi-Fi. Well, no, he isn't doing Wi-Fi. He's doing an actual, uh, you know, phone. 4G now. Oh, 4G. Anyway, uh, so um, uh, so anyway, we got you know, we had we, uh, this whole um, uh, thing is starting to bother me. This whole um, uh, election, and what's bothering me about it is is that really. It's it's slow going, you know. I mean, and they say, and I don't know if this is the, I don't know if this is the TV people just trying to get people to watch, but it never seems as though she gets enough traction to get ahead of Donald Trump. I mean, she's ahead of Donald Trump, but they say it's within the uh, the. Um, uh, margin, of margin of error. Margin of error. Yet. That's right. It, they need am a more I right space. or am I wrong? What what? What used to be yeah, the margin right. of error? Like two percent. Three percent was Is the margin of error. Yeah. Now, if it's at five percent, it's within the margin of error. Well, how <laughs> how bad have you gotten at your polling? You know. Yeah. Well, that's the confidence in it. It depends yeah. on whether they want to, you know, to what percent they want to uh, suggest that they would be active. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I mean, she's got she's got a com she's got a fairly comfortable lead, I think. But as to whether she's going to win the electoral college, that's the other problem. <clears throat> you know, um, and uh, um, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, Alex looks so bored. <laughs> what does it say here? Wait, wait. Bree is Curly's son. <laughs> There's your five, five what, five members. Alex looks so bored. Good. Did Bree find a woman yet? <laughs> Bree is married, asshole. Uh, the professor, let's see. Bree likes to eat raw fish. Uh, wake up, Al. Do I look asleep tonight? That could be Alan. I think it's on my And I, I worked out today. Come on, leave me alone, you know. It's been a rough day today. I had to do uh, an hour with uh, Lori Thompson that never came to fruition because I didn't get the audio. And uh, and uh, let's see here. Then uh, I went to, a, to, a, to, to do PT, which is exhausting. And then I came home. And uh, then I had to deal with you people, which is exhausting. Yeah. You know, so, what have you? So, so you think you think you think um, uh, Kamala is going to win this one? What's your latest predictions, people? Well, Alan Lichtman says that it's Kamala Harris, uh, and he has correctly predicted all of them except the two thousand race. Really? So, according, yeah. So, don't worry. You can stay at home. Uh, yeah. She's going to win. Well, but I can tell you, Trump will win Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania will go to Trump. 
It's funny because Kamala, when she it, goes no, to it Western look, Pennsylvania, it doesn't, she also, wait a minute, it doesn't look very good right now for Trump in Pennsylvania. No, uh, how much you want to bet, Alex? She, uh, she's ahead. How much you want to bet me? Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. How much? You, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, uh, Charlie, she's ahead, right, in Pennsylvania? Yeah. 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 Within, within the margin of error, but she's ahead. Yeah. First Don't time. count your chickens, Anna. I'll tell you why. That's my state. And look where Kamala Harris goes. I mean, she's giving a talk today, I think, in Pittsburgh. That's my hometown. That's great. I love it. But nobody lives in downtown Pittsburgh. <laughs> downtown Pittsburgh is a shell of its former self. Oh, everybody lives outside. She doesn't go to those areas. She just goes to Pittsburgh. And it's like, that's not going to win you your votes. In fact, most people around Pittsburgh, they have a not... I believe I, I, be I believe they were in some of the places that you're saying that she should be going. She they already did it early on. Okay. Yeah, but, but supposedly in Pennsylvania she's ahead. But you know you don't. Yeah, I'm reading here the listen, one report you yeah, came yeah. out of. What? The Hill. Hmm? I'm just reading out the Hill. Yeah. Has her in Pennsylvania fall by five points. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I know. I would, I'm scared because I think that they can screw with those polls. Well, yeah. you know, the polls don't say everything. You know, no. what they don't tell you is they tell you what people will tell, tell you they're going to vote for when you're standing there with a clipboard. Oh. But, uh -oh. they, but what? Uh oh. What? I left. I left my hat on the bus. Oh shit. <laughs> Here, uh, take mine. Uh, take mine, Bree. <laughs> oh, well, boy. No way to get it back, is there? No. I, I I had a hat, didn't I? Yeah, I did. No, I don't think you yeah. did. I don't remember you having a hat. I don't remember you having a yeah. hat. <laughs> I you had, had a one. hat. You had one that was oh, threw the mosquitoes away. Maybe you had you left no. it where you were sitting waiting for no, the No, no, because when I walked down. I remember the sun was hot and I put it on. Oh, gosh uh, darn it. That's the second hat I've lost this month. I'm going to the other side and wait for the bus to come back. Gosh darn it. I can't believe it. It had to be on the... And I know what happened because I've got a bag here. And this bag is very important for me. And, and I didn't want to lose the bag. It's a, it's a Sea to Summit sling bag. It's very, very hard to find. Yep. And so, oh, darn it. There goes I my dad. I got a lot of hats, Bree. Give me your address. I'll mail you one. <laughs> this one is special because it's made from a material that is very, very lightweight, and it dries very quickly. Oh, gosh darn it. And if it wasn't on the bus, then I have to go all the way back and retrace where I walk. Yeah. Oh, boy. What a waste of time. You bought it? What? Yeah, I mean, I know where I can get another one. Yeah. It's uh, seven, seven dollars. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, but you yeah. know, buy two next time. That way, you'll have a spare. I do. I have two. In fact, I had three. I lost one. But right now, he's in a very hot country, yeah. and they're not have a cap. Right? Am I right about that? Plus, look at him. He's you got no hair. He's got no hair. Yeah. I'd be a red lobster. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I the reason I wear a cap is uh, not because I'm bald and don't want to admit to it, but the reason I wear a cap outside is because I don't like this, oop, the sun, uh, uh, you know, uh, bearing down on my head. So Yeah. Uh, I, I it either I left it on the bus or when I made the exchange to my belt clip, I have a clip for it. It felt I didn't put it on correctly and it might have fallen off. So See, I, we, I, I don't remember. To, I, 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 do you want me to go back and replay? Uh, no, the I, I definitely of this? had it, Alex. <laughs> I remember putting it on to block the sun as I walked down that long stretch. I remember because the sun was very hot. And I said, wow, I'm glad I remembered my hat. I, it said Trump for president. I remember it, too. <laughs> you, you, you had a hat on while you were walking earlier. I agree. Okay. So, 
and I've got to get it back. What a waste of a day. You know, my whole time, I waited a half an hour for that stupid bus. And then once I get on it, I lose my hat, you know. Here we've got uh, an election going on here. We yeah. were talking about it, you know, and who's going to win and who's <laughs> not going to win. And all of a Who sudden, cares, we have a major nice. tragedy. Bray yep. in his hat. <laughs> well, that's true. I know. I feel that I way. Mean, if I lose a hat or something, I feel the same way, you know. And this is the second one, you know, in a month. Yeah. And and the other one, I left it in a taxi. And so I told the taxi driver, when you come by this, well, it's like an Uber. When you come by this area, just leave it with the security desk. She said, how much? How much are you giving me? Are you paying me to drive there? And I said, I said, just if you happen to be in the area, like, you know, anytime within the next year, you know, which is very likely. And and the, I never got it back. So she hmm. wanted more than it cost to buy a new hat. Yes. Oh, and I had that in Dubai, the same thing. I had a I had this uh, sweater I wear. It's a jer brown jersey that I wear on the airplane. Mm -hmm. It's very light, but it's also warm. And I left it in a taxi. And so I contacted them and I said, I will come out to the airport because I think that, you know, the next day it was midnight. I had to take a taxi. And um, and the guy said, oh, I'll bring it you to your hotel. I'm like, no, no, no. But he had already started driving. So he got there and he's like, it's 80 dirhams. I'm like, are you kidding? That's 20 U.S. dollars. I said the jersey is, is probably just about worth that, you know. And I said, uh, I wanted to meet you out there. I was going to take a take the subway. So how about 40? And he agreed to 40. So I paid 10 dollars to get my jersey back. Wow. Well, he probably wow. sprayed it. These things happen. With mosquito repellent. Hmm. Well, in Dubai, you don't need that. But in Malaysia, you do. Oh, yeah. Well, well anyway, so. Next weekend, I'll be in uh, Vietnam. So I'll try to call you from there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then the weekend after that, I'll be in the Philippines. Weekend after that, I'll be in Thailand. The weekend after that, in Singapore. Weekend after that, in China. Wow, he's wow. a traveler. Traveling man. Weekend weekend after that, Greece happens. Do, do, you, do you need the hat because you got to walk from place to place? <laughs> yes, I do. My wife and I, in a couple of weeks, are going to be in Lebanon. And, uh, no. Yeah. Really? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah. I have an open invitation to go to Lebanon. At any time. Come to Lebanon, watch people get killed. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the thing is that um, um, I have, uh, I was t talking to Lori, and they're uh, traveling. They're going to be taking, like, they we're going to take a trip around the world by boat. And now they're not going to be able to do it because the boat will not go near any of those countries. I don't blame them. So yeah, what I they do either. is they leave that everybody off on the They could side. just go to Cyprus. Hmm? They could they could reroute that. Just go to Cyprus instead of Lebanon. Well, I mean, it's just there are too many hot spots right now, and they mm -hmm. can't uh, they can't assure that the the boat isn't going to be you know pirated or whatever any mm -hmm. number of things. Cool. Yeah. You know. So I mean, who knows what's going to happen? So well, you know, if pirates get on board, then you'll then you'll appreciate more. Uh, when you have uh, somebody that is sniper trained on board and takes out these bad guys. Yeah. Did you see what you see, you, you see what uh, Kamala said? If if, if, if if she had owns a gun and if somebody came into her house, she shot yeah. them. And I thought yeah. that was an honest answer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she didn't. And if she's the president of the United States, she can get away with it because the Supreme Court said so. No, but she, no, she could also she get, away. get away with it anyway. You get away with it anyway. In their house. In most states, you know, they have uh, uh, you know laws that allow you to protect yourself. Yeah. I mean, I just I would not own. A, I would just not own a gun because I'm afraid of them. Okay. Uh, they give me a chill. I don't know where the bus stops here. 
What I'm not sure where the bus stops here. Are you trying okay. to go back and get your cap? Is that what's going on here? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for the bus to come back. I will get on the bus, see if my cap is there. If it is, I'll take the cap and get back off quickly. Weren't you, weren't you if going? If not, I have to ride the bus back. Weren't you going to work? Huh? Weren't you going to work? Yes, you, I was. But are you going to tell them you're going to be? I don't late? have. Um, no, I. I don't have to do that. I have flexi time. No, oh, okay. And technically, Thursdays are my, sort of my. Well, Monday's my work from home, but Thursday is my leave me alone own day. So I can get work done uh, for for, the, for two months. Yeah, so I have flexi time. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Sounds sure. like it sounds like a good country to work in. Yeah. 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 Sounds like they treat you right. Yeah. So how have you been, Tony? What have you been up to, Tony? Well, other than selling comics and walking the dogs, that's about it, really. How's yeah. Kansas doing? Kansas is doing good, actually. I got a. I had to turn away a customer because Alex, I'm walking four dogs. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Jeez. But you know what's funny, Alex? Though? Why are you walking dogs? Do you get paid for it? Yeah, they, oh. I get forty dollars an hour. So I actually have a little side hustle too now. Wow. Forty dollars an hour. Wow. Yeah. But well, you know, like I, I'm not Kansas even going to ask him what he makes off of the comic books because yeah, he's, he's got four. He makes 160 an hour. So I got I got so yeah I was going through a collection I bought you want to I'll tell you a quick story I bought a collection from a guy who was he's about I would say he's in the early seventies so my brother knew the guy he worked with me so he's moving in with his girlfriend into in in Brooklyn so he's getting rid of the apartment in Queens he says I'm going to throw these comics out he says Tony you want to give me whatever you think of them so I went over there and says you know what I'll give you a hundred bucks he had like two hundred bucks I was looking at him right I'm not going to go through every book but I saw like ten or fifteen that I can probably send to CGC. Says, I'll take it. So then I come home and I'm still going through the books, right? And I'm looking at, I put one of the books out, it's an Iron Man. I go, it's signed by Joe Simon on the cover from the guy who created Captain America in the 40s. I said, holy shit. And I had Joe Simon sign books for me. So I went in the back and said, let me pull the book out. I know how he signs. I said, oh shit, I'm not, a, I'm not gonna verify it myself, but that's his signature. So I send it out to CGC to verify it. CDC, so like, wait a minute, isn't that, isn't that the uh, people who look into drugs and things like that? <laughs> no, no, that's the, that's the grading company. So now they, they'll verify the signature for me. So I said, I definitely know it's his. So I was like, oh my, I, I call my brother and I says, look at so this. How much would that be worth now? You bought that's all these for I, looked it up. Huh? I would say... 200 uh, bucks. No, more than that because it's Joe Simon. He didn't sign a lot of books because he was old. When he started, when they started doing this, and I would say I could probably get if I waited it out on the low end, say four hundred bucks. Jeez. Oh, my yeah. God. So I'm probably going to sell that privately on Comic Link. I'm not trying to promote them, but I know the guy who uh, works there, and I because you know why, Alex? It's a private house on Comic Link. So you, let's say you're a high end, you're a buyer, and you want to keep yourself concealed. When they when you put a book on Comic Link, you don't really know who's buying the book. So now, say I'm not Josh gonna ask it. you. I'm not going to ask you how much yeah. money you make with this comic book hustle of you. I have a lot of stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. Have, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I help you pay your taxes. Do you pay? Oh, I do. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you make at least a hundred thousand a year doing this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to not, not discriminate. Oh, wait, 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 okay. wait. I do okay. I, yeah. I do okay. That's the Jew answer. Come on. You yeah. know. No, check your second. Yeah. It's like I got my Morgan Stanley account. I used to laugh when I'm home. What are you doing? I said, Well, I take some of the money that we are. I says, I'm investing in this. Is, I really don't want the comics because it's not liquid enough for me. I like the idea that when I move money into, say, a stock or an index, I can just call up and You're say, You're doing you know, stocks on top of this? Yeah, yeah. Oh Check my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I've always done stocks. He's a hustler. Alex, and I'm not trying to brag. I, I don't mean it like that. Because <laughs> I was a kid who really never had a great job. But you know what I said to someone says? So I kind of always saved one of my checks from AMP, and I have it still in the back. And I said, I leave it up there. Because you know what I say to myself when the butcher says to me, you know, you really don't pay attention. You know what I said? And I say, hey, Vinny, I talk to the check like this, hey, Vinny Mondo. I still have Apple stock and Microsoft for the last 25 years. You know, oh, I don't mean man. arrogant, but when you get people t telling you like, oh, you know, you're stupid or he's eccentric, it's that's just me. I mean, I don't mean to be like callous about it, 
Because I always talk, because I, you know what it is? When my mom never made a lot of money, or I mean, when you were struggling to get by, you appreciate when you're making something then. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, I mean, I remember you were working for your uncle. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I did it as a favor. I liked like the that. place. I was keeping busy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah, baseball. But all along, you were making. Oh, I was always selling comics. You do that. Yeah, I used to fight with them all the time. I'm still saying, you make at least 100000 a year? Oh, yeah. I do well. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I do well. Wow. <laughs> I do all my time. You know, somebody that makes 100000 a year can afford an orthodontist. Well, I mean, I used to get my braces done, to say the truth. I was paying out of my pocket. I didn't even have dental insurance. Well, even either. if even if you do have dental insurance, it's like fifteen hundred bucks are going to pay back every year. Yeah, you're right. That's my deductible. You know, so the, 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 all your dental work that you do pretty much yeah. is out of your pocket. Yeah. No, I mean I don't mean to be like you know look at me or anything like that because it's also a stroke. You hit something on the head, Alex, and people think like it's a lot of luck. Because I invested in Apple, Alex, back in the day. We were ready to go out of business. Yeah, well, I said, they, were, they were close to going belly up. Yeah, at one point. that's when I put a whole bunch of money in them. I said, you know what? If he's going to rescue Whoa. them, maybe they'll stick around. So I said, I threw some money in them then. Tony, so how, maybe you ought to invest in the uh, Trump stock. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. It's a near and all-time Alex, low. No way. <laughs> past two days, it's gone up a dollar. But you know, but Alan does well. You know what I do love about Alan? And I can tell you guys this. What I love about the comics, and I even told this to Shecky. He said, you know what I loved about it? Because I still have stuff my mother bought for me as a kid, like big treasury editions, and I don't sell those because it almost feels like when I'm doing it, I feel like a kid again. So, well, you know, I still read the stories, so I enjoy it. To me, it's not like work mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Yeah. Other than Alex, it's, uh, oh, your Texas uh, post office re rerouted a box. The guy is supposed to go to Tomble, this guy, one of my customers. He says, Tony, they pushed the box. It's coming back to me. So I got a box going back to the guy. So Texas's post office is a little shaky down there right now. Uh, uh, yeah, John, yeah, he's gonna get it tomorrow. I told him. Well, I was are, are, are there problems with the Texas uh, 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 post offices? I think so. I, I mail out these umpire checks every couple mm -hmm. of weeks, and you know it's like more and more of them are getting to the wrong place. And stuff. yeah, he's, they rescanned it. Well, wrong. What's strange <laughs> about that is that isn't a pro problem with Texas. That's a problem with the federal government. Could be too. I well, mean, because of the joy, whatever his name is, that that, that Trump put in there, he's, he's trying to kill the post office. Well, I can attest to one thing, Alex, and I can tell you guys this: the remember the last election, Charlie, when he was screwing around with the post office stuff. That November, Alex, and into December, anything I sent to Chicago, it wasn't even moving; it was just sitting there. And I had to close my store. I told Checky for the whole month of December because I had too many boxes that weren't moving. He screwed everything well, up. That he was, do, he was doing that because he was trying to screw up the voting. Yeah, mail -in I voting. Said, mail -in mail -in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was pissed. He cost me a whole month of work of sales. Wow. That's a reason why wow. he killed my mother and he hurt my store. <laughs> oh, really, That's Alex? Nice. I went to the cemetery and I go, Ma, please. I don't know if you can hear me, but you got to make him lose. I can't take. <laughs> wins well mm. you know we who knows what's going to happen but all i know is we're going to uh we're going to france on uh, the, nice the seventh and if he becomes president in that period <laughs> of time back. we're not coming back yeah. hey you could stay there alex how long could you stay out of the country uh, uh, I, I, I can keep getting visas 30 days oh okay no but i think you he can has go connections he's alex i Bennett. think you can do yeah. I think you like. I think you can do like three months or something or something like that. You know? Well, watch your taxes. You have to. Well. Yeah, but anyway, there's the you still thing. Still haven't got your hat yet back, Bree. I'm waiting for the bus to come back. Well, so well, well it, tune in tomorrow night, and Bree will call the program and let you know how every well, if we'll he ever see. got his hat back. Well, thanks, Charlie. Yeah. I appreciate your call tonight. Uh, thanks to Alan. Uh, thanks to Bree, who took pity on me, saying, oh, mm -hmm. you got to call Alex, because he doesn't have anybody. Uh, Jeff Stein, <laughs> thank you so much. And Tony, of course, uh, uh, thank you for calling us this evening. Everybody give a big wave Good goodbye, night, and I'll give a big wave night. goodbye uh, at you. Be safe, Bree. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. There they go, Bye. ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll be getting another one assembled tomorrow night. In fact, there's one that's going to be assembled right now. 
courtesy of uh, Amy Manuel in the intersection, and they'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again, let's see here, uh, tomorrow night, same time. You know, uh, I've got still got 50 seconds. Let me stall here. Oh, what do you know? This, uh, my, uh, this, look at that, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that shouldn't be. Anyway, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.